Hey guys, my name is Nate and this is my brother Steven. Together we are Wingman Merch. Thanks for checking out our video. We put these up about a month after we shoot them. If you'd like to catch any of these videos live, check out our Facebook page. The link is in the description. Uh, I want to say happy Mother's Day to everybody. Oh yeah. I had a blast with my mom. We actually kind of drug it out uh, three or four days because the weather was not that great. We kind of started it on Friday and then just did different things throughout the weekend. And I had a blast. So I just want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Uh, even if your son didn't say happy Mother's today, he appreciates it. I know there's been many years where I forgot <laughs> to, to tell my mother. <laughs> now that she lives with me, it's a little harder. Yeah. But I do I, love my mom. Uh, yeah, I called her a day early. I was like, I know tomorrow is going to be a tornado and I'm not going to have time to call her. So I called her the day before. I should probably call her again tonight after we're done. Yeah, so I guess let's speak on what you've been up to since last Monday. Take us through the oh, boy. Nate trail of life. Last Monday, I was in Colorado in Denver area. Uh, from there, I went and spent uh, two nights in the Rocky Mountains and fully enjoyed just being in nature. So that was fun. And driving all the crazy mountains up there was really fun. <laughs> And now I'm currently in Michigan uh, after a 15 hour day of driving. And I went to a very traditional Pakistani wedding. So it lasted three days. So the last three days I've just been, uh, I've DJed one of the days and the other two days I was just there enjoying it, but I feel wiped out <laughs> after all of the celebration and good food and dancing. Um, so. I took a little bit of time today just to like recover, get the VAs back on track because they were like asking me like, where's the work? Because this weekend I was just like so out of it. Um, so if you ask me to do anything basically this last week, please ask me again if I haven't gotten back to you. Um, I've got a long list of things that I'm still trying to catch up on. But yeah, traveling has been a lot of fun, um, but it's crazy <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it's funny how the roles have flipped now. Uh, last month, I was pretty much MIA. Not to say that you're MIA, but you're. I'm handling more of the group, and you're handling more of not problems per se, but just life. Yeah. I like working with you for that fact that like I can take over, you can take over. Especially having you take over was such an eye-opening thing to go like, oh man, my my brother has come such a long way from when you first moved in with us. Uh, not to say that you couldn't have done that in the beginning, but just like. I probably your mindset. <laughs> <laughs> how how much you've grown in just the past however long it's been three years yeah um, i mean it's super nice to have it's you nice being able to rely on you as well um just you know i haven't had to answer a ton of questions in the group steven's basically been handling that and posting and stuff um just to allow me to live life for a week um more than a week but um it is it, like, I mean, we always talk about partnering and stuff, but if you can find someone to help you with your business, like, it, it's just such a, uh, I don't know, it's very encouraging to know that I can, like, take a few days off um, and everything, like, there's not a ton of fires I have to put out. Like, yeah, there's a long list of stuff that I have to catch up on um, and do, but it's not like everything's completely out of whack. Like, Steven's been holding down the floor completely fine, so. I guess we should do that, too, like a... Um benefits of partnering when we think about it because I mean my thing was a huge life problem and just being able to work with somebody to where my business didn't have to like come to a screeching halt to where that who knows two months later I have to like build that thing back up it just kind of at least one part of it just rolled without a problem and that's when I was like oh yeah I definitely want to do that that's what got me more into the group to just go like, oh, this thing seems way better to work with my brother for that reason. It is a relationship that I built up even to where I'm like now partnering up differently, private label, wholesale, everything else that I'm doing in a different light. It made me reach out more to people like Jenny to build those partnerships even stronger so that when stuff like that happens, I can just continue business as normal if I need to take long times like that off. To even to your point, like I remember working by myself and like, Taking a vacation was very like stressful because you had to plan out so much stuff. Like even though I'm doing FBA and I'm sending that inventory in, I have to prep. Like either I gotta pack more 
before I go or think like as soon as I come home, I got to really bust my ass to make sure everything kind of stays steady for the income that we have. So it was like always a stressful time instead of just like, oh, I get to go on vacation and things are just going to continuously roll. And then when I get back, okay, yeah, I do have to catch up on a few things, but it's not like stressing me out because I have nobody else to rely on. Even for you to be able to just reach out and say, hey, can you do this or you do that? It seems that should that's how a business should run, or at least a partnership. I think once you have a business and a business system set up where you have like somebody kind of managing it, that's great. But I don't think you get there without, well, for us and for me especially, partnering. Because to build up a VA team and somebody to manage the VA team, that takes a long time. It's, and with the life coming at you, it's very difficult to like continuously build that thing when you have problems coming at you. Yeah, to be an entrepreneur and then say like you have a business like set up, um i think is a rarity <laughs> like we're always like switching and staying on top of things like so it's hard for us to just be like okay like the vas you know they got jobs coming in and they know how to do whatever they need to do um i'm not saying it's impossible like joy is doing that stuff and it works out great for her but we're trying to stay much more on top of things in like a newer more volatile environment that is merch um so just to like leave merch for a week I mean, there's so much that happens in a week. You, you like basically, you know, you got to learn so much stuff. Like there's so much catching up to do. So, um, yeah, it definitely helps having a partner. Like you stay on top of that. You're like, oh, did you see this? Can you do this or whatever? Like, it's just so much easier to have another actual person there um, doing that stuff instead of trying to like schedule it all out. Or, you know, I can take this week off and then I, you know, like you said, I have to bust my tail. Double to, time, yeah. Yeah, like get back on top of things and I'll be, you know, instead of spending 12 hours a day, I'm going to spend 25 hours a day working tomorrow. It's, it's, it's a never ending task. My you good know, old 25 hours. hours. Yeah, I was the 25 hours. Hour. Day in, day out, day in, day out. Yeah, that's not <laughs> fun. And I think, yeah. I, I think that was a big thing when you moved into just seeing like, oh, this is kind of what partnerships are. More than like what I was trying to do before is like force things to work and then just right. wait naturally build this thing uh because even now the partnerships that i have is like i'm not trying to get married on the first day i'm trying to see if those partnerships are going to work out again i'm not here for the right now i'm five ten years in this thing out that's what i'm more concerned about so if we can work just on a test something to try something out and then see over a long period of time if it's going to work or not um i really like that that's why i think i like this group so much is because I, I i get to meet some of these people i get to see their success and kind of see how it's growing i love people person messaging me and saying hey i just did this even today, I got like five or six people reaching out to me and go, hey, this is the first time I finally got a deal like this. So I've reached out to this person. This is really working out. Like that's super inspiring to me to go, okay, I don't have a hand in that yet other than just some advice. But if that thing keeps working, I might have a way to partner with them in the future to build up more of what I want of my future to be. Yeah. And I haven't been super focused on this group, but like definitely doing that on a local basis. Um I mean, I've talked about helping my pastor out in Texas, and now that I'm here in Michigan, like where a ton of my connections are, um, I'm so excited I'm to start setting up meetings with um, like people who own businesses in this area. Like I, I have a good amount of connections. I'm so excited to just go start talking to them and talk to them about merch and how we can help each other out. Um, so that's been super rewarding on my end too, um, kind of seeing that like offline. I guess that leads us into our next thing. I posted about, we want to, well, you want to do a road trip next year and I want to kind of plan it out better. So I was just trying to get a local feel of where everybody was at. And I, I, I mean, a ton of people responded, so I'm super happy about that. So I think we're going to take that list, kind of build a roadmap and then possibly, I don't know how we're going to pull it off, but set up local meetings to different things that we're going to. I know for sure I'm going to be Vegas. I'm going to be in Vegas twice next year, California, probably two times, Texas, a handful of times, and then possibly um, New York side down to Orlando side. So if we can just start like setting those meetings up, uh, I would really like to do that. So I appreciate everybody that posted in there. Um, we don't know how that's going to go exactly, <laughs> but when me and Nathaniel sit back down together, we should be able to brainstorm that out and kind of figure it out. Uh, again, just to the point of like, when you meet people face to face, you can start building those relationships. When you go and join the hangout and those people are starting to talk and starting to do business in those hangouts, we want to start empowering more people to do that because 
being an entrepreneur, you have to have a network. And if that network at least semi understands what you're doing, it just makes everything so much easier. I mean, especially the success stories we're hearing come out of stuff like that is like, oh, that's when the like you really light that TNT and that thing kind of blows up. Like it's it's cool to help people with merch and the one on ones and do all that stuff, but like really when you start partnering up, that's when we're seeing a lot of success for us and especially just the group. I just I think people are missing the power of getting to know other people and networking. And I don't know how to do that other than like events. So I guess in Michigan, if we have anybody in Michigan, we should make a post because uh, you're going to be there for a little bit, right? Well, yeah, I was waiting to say anything um, about that. because in <laughs> Well, it, it's not secret. Like, if you guys are in Michigan, um, I, I do want to set up part time to like just, you know, come see with you kind of regardless of where you're at, if I can make a trip out of it. Um, but uh next week i'm going to canada for like a week or two so i don't want to be like hey i'm in michigan and then be gone for a week or two um but if you are in michigan and want to meet up definitely reach out um i've had other people reach out and i just kind of dropped the ball um so i apologize to those people um but life is just super crazy i do plan on spending uh, like about a month in this area so hopefully we'll be able to try and set something up um but yeah, like I absolutely love the people that I've met up with so far, just the conversations that we've had, like being able to, you know, directly talk to them about what niches they're in. Like it's, I guess, a lot easier to talk to someone when they're like right in front of you and not over like the internet. You feel a little bit more, you know, confidence in them that they're not going to, you know, I'm not going to steal your niches or anything like that. Like hopefully most of you guys trust us at this point, but um, it was cool just to like, you know, whip out my iPad and be like, oh, okay, here's some things that you can think about. Um, that you just can't do over, you know, in a big group like this. So um, that's really cool. Yeah, I guess the uh, kind of the thing I want to touch on this week was people's challenges and kind of give them actionable steps on taking on that. With you, even that, all the traveling that you're doing, um, I guess we should talk about what our challenges are also and maybe tie in whatever actionable steps are going to be asking the group to do also chime in on um i guess i'll ask you what do you feel like your challenges have been the last week two weeks month and then I mean, what actionable steps are you possibly going to be taking yeah i think your I keep hurdles saying, your problems yeah i think i keep saying it would just like the scheduling stuff um just like being all over the place it's been very difficult like i just said like my vas this weekend ask me like hey where's the work um I just need to be more on top of that. So I need to get better at like planning stuff out. Like I've basically the last year, just been able to sit and focus on merch. So now that I'm trying to, you know, travel and have like real life stuff going on, um, there's a pull for my schedule. So I can't just sit in front of my computer for 12, 15 hours a day anymore. Like I, I have, you know, people that I'm trying to meet with the businesses, whether it's business focus or just, you know, um, like. traveling focus. Yeah. Like being in a car for 15 hours is just, you can only do so much through voice to text. Um, so um, learning how to schedule all that out where, you know, I have time to work and I have time to, you know, live life um, is a balance for me. And I'm young and I'm sure I'll figure it out, but that is something that I'm like trying to actively work on now. And I would definitely has, say has been a hurdle for me to get over the last couple of weeks, like just learning how to plan all that out again. Huge thanks to Steven for like, you know, picking the ball up where I have dropped it. Um, but I need to get much better at planning all that out so I can make sure I'm trying to get everything done for work and still have time to go outside and see the sun once in a while. <laughs> Do you have any off the top actionable steps to take? Um, I've been pretty diligent about um, like scheduling things out as far as like making list of like to do um but putting actual like deadlines to that stuff is what i need to work on um i yeah if i have deadlines i'm much better about like okay i can't you know go grab lunch with this person i have to sit down and do this um so i would say just off the top of my head like making more deadlines for myself instead of like okay here's the list of stuff i want to do sometime you know this week or hopefully this month um but being like, okay, by Wednesday, I need to have this, this, this done. Um, and then probably even like farther than that, like, okay, I know this morning I'm going to have a couple hours to myself because most people are at work. Um, 
like let me actually line out what I'm or make an outline of what I'm trying to get done in that time um, and sticking to that. That's something that I learned from actually doing graphics for um, the screen printing company I was working for because before I would just you know take all day to do one graphic because it was more of like an art project that I was working on um, but working at the graphic company they were very okay you have an hour to do this like you can't take you know your eight hour shift just to make one design you have one hour to make this customer happy go um, so doing that for my own business now and because it's not just art, it's scheduling, it's getting back to people, it's shooting videos, all the stuff that we're trying to do for this group. Um, I just need to be more diligent about that. So that was kind of a long explanation, but. Yeah, it's just a, a life learning lesson. I mean, as you grow and as a business grows, like nothing ever lines up. You either like are overqualified for the situation or very underqualified situation. It's never like, oh, I'm perfectly qualified for what I'm about to move into. Um, yeah. And I think with you traveling and doing all that stuff, that is a lot of new, especially you like getting older and being an adult. Um, and then this business too, there's just a lot of new things that you have to learn. I guess th as long as you recognize it and you're moving towards it, that's kind of what I'm trying to get at this week. Like recognize a problem, a hurdle, a situation. What are steps that you need to do to move forward? I, I think I'm back to, I feel like I have a better handle on this group and the time that it's going to take me to do the things that I want in this group. Um, a lot of things are taking more time than they should because they are very new, like the editing, the videos and kind of getting, taking a lot of calls to learn how other people have groups set up and then just trying to figure out how we want to help people. Um, and then the, the last thing is because we did that uh, presentation and I kind of got with joy and we kind of found out what we can and cannot do. Um, we want to turn that presentation into a class. So we are going to resurrect it and then teach it as a class. So we're going to – the presentation was actually only 35 minutes because our time got cut <laughs> yeah. right before we went up there. But it is when we were doing it before, like a run-through, an hour and a half long. And I believe if we teach it as a class, it could be two hours with interaction. So we want to teach that. That's something that's going to be coming kind of like the over the shoulder. We don't have a date for it yet because we just found out that we can actually kind of do it like that. So now we're going to take the information and kind of sprinkle in actionable steps along with the stories that we're going to be telling. So that will also be coming more than likely next month, but we just want to make you aware of that from now. Um, and then yeah, I guess I personally had people ask me like, oh, can we get the recording for all that stuff? We don't own any of that. And that's why Stephen keeps saying, like, you had to talk to Joy to make sure we can use that content. Um, so we figured out a way. We're calling it, like, remixing it. Um, it's basically just more information that we did um, because we had such a short amount of time in Houston um, or Texas, whatever area that was in. Um, but, yeah, we will be doing that as, like, a full class for you guys. And we'll have – it's more exciting for us. Like, we got such good feedback when we presented it live and we felt like we had to like, you know, super chop it up and make it like as short as possible. So giving us the freedom uh, just to talk about it and give you guys those actionable steps. Like we're pretty excited about that. We've seen some business models come out of that. I've been talking with some people who have like crazy connections um, because of that presentation. So I'm super excited to present that to this group as well. Yeah. Even during the presentation, we were asking people to get up and kind of mix with each other. And then we realized that like, as soon as we said that, Joy was like, you got five minutes. I was like, oh, okay, never mind. Never mind. We got to <laughs> keep this thing rolling. Yeah. So I guess we'll go oh. back to the action step. So now um, that we've talked about your hurdle, we want to kind of focus this week on just hurdles in general, problems. We noticed that some people are saying, oh, I, I've been running out of time, haven't been able to get my uploads and all, just hurdles that everybody faces. You're an entrepreneur. This is going to be a weekly, daily struggle. We fully understand that. That's kind of why we talked about it in the beginning of the show. But we want to kind of challenge you guys. Uh, we want you to write it down, the hurdle that you want to focus on, and then each day take at least one actionable step to kind of get over that hurdle. Uh, this is something that me and Nathaniel started doing very early on because we were inundated with just a lot of things, life problems, problems <laughs> and we had to like stack them as in far as important and then give each thing an actionable step so we could actually start moving forward 
on these things. And we just kind of rolled that into our business and found that that's an awesome thing to do. Um, because a lot of people go, oh, what's the three most important things? Like that's all well and good. But when there are problems and hurdles that come up, if every day you kind of, I mean, the cliche of you eat elephant one bite at a time, just everything takes a time to build and just all those cliche things. But it does actually work if you write it down and then write down actionable steps to take each day to then get over that hurdle. So the VA stuff, I have actionable steps written down. Nathana, you have actionable steps written down yet for your um, scheduling, but at least you have a game plan and then every day if you can write something down. Um, but we do want to like help people with those problems that you have in your business to just give you a new way of thinking about it and actionable steps to do daily to kind of see you progressing in those. So if you're running out of time and you can't do your daily books, maybe cut it down. Maybe you don't hit your limits every day, but at least, okay, every day I'm going to put two up or on Wednesday, I'm going to do all of them and then prep the ones for the next three days and then try to push them through whatever, however you want to set that up, but at least take actionable steps every day to do it. Yeah, that that's been like the biggest, you know, mindset shift for me from just being creative artist to being able to actually get stuff done. There's nothing wrong with being a creative artist, but there is a kind of stereotype that goes with being someone who's creative and just having no schedule. And it's really true for the artists that I work with and it was for myself. Um, but like, I absolutely love actionable steps now. Like it, Steven helps me so much to like kind of plan those things out and like get in the right mindset of how I want to, you know, eat that elephant, if you will. Um, but it, it just helps so much having something written down. Okay. This is what I'm trying to accomplish today. Um, and like Steven said, if it, even if it's just one thing, um, it feels so much more rewarding to be able to look back at your week and okay, this week, you know, the five work days, I completed these five tasks and that's really going to help me for the next week, just like, you know, lighten some of the load or, you know, figure out some of the problems that I had. So I love actual steps again, to go over the one for this week. We're trying to help you guys think about what your hurdles are. So if you can write one hurdle down to focus on, um, and then each day of this week, uh, create a task to help you get over that hurdle. Um, that's definitely stuff that's helped me and Steven in our business and stuff that we're still continuing to do. Like Steven said, he has some actual steps. I have a game plan. I need to sit down and actually write out my steps for this week. Um, but I'm definitely going to do that. And that helps us just get things done, um, in a more timely fashion. <laughs> So then the questions in the group, uh, I feel like we did a good job or I did a good job like answering a lot of those questions and they were answered kind of completely. I have compiled each week now moving forward into its own separate tag. So if anybody is interested, I kind of made a, um, I forget what that post was even called, a cap, a, a recall, recap. Re recap. Yeah. Um, and then it has that link in there. But if you don't see that link, you can go up to the right-hand side and hit the tag for week, I think of, I it, week of May 7th. Yeah. So all the information from last week is in there. So if you didn't have time, we're just trying to organize all that stuff for you guys. So Jennifer Chung asked uh, for nonprofits, the emails for emails or printed URLs, does anyone use a URL, a URL shortener or forwarder? Um, and Randy actually answered this and says, said, uh, I'm so sorry, guys, and said he used bit.ly, which is B-I-T dot L-Y. Um, and it puts Amazon at the beginning and shortens the URL. Um, so I'm not 100% the context of this question, um, but for nonprofits, when I'm trying to share a URL to them, um, and uh, I don't know if we want to shoot a short video on this, but you can take the Amazon link. Uh, Steven, you probably know better on this, actually. Can you talk about the just how to take the Amazon link and the um, AS is it ASIN in there just to make that like super short Amazon link? That's clickable? Yeah, I can actually shoot a quick video on that. But if you, you're going to see the Amazon link, and then you're going to see, I'm almost tempted to screen share on this right now. Yeah, I think you might as well just do it. It's not that complicated of a thing. Um, so as Steven's pulling up his screen share, um, I'll just kind of explain what it is. But on Amazon, you can shorten the link right through Amazon. So it won't be as short as a dot bit.ly, but it is quicker. Um, and I don't even know if I want to say more reliable. 
because I've never had a problem with that there uh, Bitly, but I know sometimes they don't, some websites don't like URL shorteners. Um, so this is kind of a way around all of that. Um, so Stephen will show you, are you screen sharing? I'm, yeah, okay, perfect. So Stephen's gonna show you um, kind of how to shorten that uh, just so right through Amazon. When you're searching on Amazon, I mean, they're, that doesn't matter. <laughs> the URL that you're gonna see is gonna have a lot of information in it. All you really need is this core piece right here. So all you're gonna need to do is take this part out, and then the back end, because this is the ASIN right here, and then everything else off of the back end of the ASIN, and then if you enter on that, this will actually send you to this link. And this can be the ch child or parent ASIN. Um, so if I select a size, it'll change to this. So if somebody's asking for a specific size, you can actually give them that shortened link. Oh, uh, I guess it depends if it's a merch shirt or not. And they might actually be handling that a little bit different. But either way, if you shorten all of that stuff that's in there down to this core, you can then use this link. And this is the shortest link that you can use. And you can use this with any ASIN. So if you have any ASIN that you know off the top of your head, I mean, I have a few in here. Um, you can just type that in after the DP uh, backslash. So Amazon backslash DP backslash, and then any ASIN, regardless if it's a merch shirt or a private label product or a wholesale or a bundle or whatever the case may be, that's the link that you can send people to make it as short as possible without yeah. using a shortener, I guess. Right. And like I said, the there's usually not a problem using a shortener, but some websites don't like it. And some emails will like, you know, see that and um, hide it. Um, so sure, that's just, or... yeah, um, that's just a way kind of around all that stuff. So hopefully that answers your question. That's a little nugget that we've known since whenever we started selling on Amazon. Um, when we were trying yeah, to I like, that out pretty early on, along with like skipping yeah. pages and all that stuff. I think just from beautiful minding everything and trying to <laughs> figure out everything, clicking buttons day in and day out, you kind of see patterns and then start playing with the patterns and then figure all that stuff out. That's why I said I think this is a per perfect partnership because I, for some strange reason, really enjoy prodding and poking Amazon to find out what's going on. And it really helps us get way out ahead of the competition in merch because I don't see anybody else doing that. Yeah. Or at least they're not talking about it. You just have so much information from previous things you've done on and Amazon. And private label is like you have to be on a high yeah. level. Sean Elliott says, we've been using Trello for our VAs and it seems to work out really well. Nice. Uh, we started using Trello for our VAs, but again, just because of how we've had to scale everything up so crazy, um, everything has to go on spreadsheets now. Um, it's uh, We use Google Sheets for everything that we're doing, basically, as far as um, managing our VAs. Um, and it just makes life a lot easier uh, just because... I don't know. It, Trello was fantastic because it's cool to tell them like, okay, you need to do this job. And then when they're done, you can drag it over here. And, and if they have the questions, they can put it right on the card. Like it was really good um, when we weren't at such a crazy scale. Um, but now that we're doing so much. Per day. That's yeah. the problem is the yeah. per day that we have. To go through each of those cards, like it's crazy. So now we actually use a combination of Google Sheets and Slack. Um, Slack is just kind of a more professional Facebook messenger. Um, and for my own personal reasons, I don't want to be friends with my VAs because on Facebook, at least, um, because if I do have to let them go or if something doesn't work out, like I feel really bad, like having them as a friend on Facebook, um, it's just another thing that I don't want to complicate with. So I just use Slack for everything, um, that I do with the VAs and it's really easy to drop and click, uh, sorry, to drop in like certain files and say, Hey, you know, I need you to change this on this art piece or whatever. So. That's the system that we're using now, but I'm glad that you're using Trello. Trello has been awesome. We still use Trello for um, other things, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we don't use it for our VAs right now. I guess that's another thing that we are looking at to develop is a system for us, because like a lot of things, even the research side of things, like we're having to 
Frankenstein our way through a lot of things. So we, I really like the program developing side of things. So I'm looking at that a lot. Uh, we have a few things in the work, but definitely having an all encumbering system that we can work off of is something that we're moving towards in the future. But that is one of those big elephants that we are just slowly yeah. <laughs> biting. <laughs> I'm not in a huge rush to try and tackle that one. It's just a day by day thing that we're like, okay, this is something that we need. This is how we need to communicate and just kind of keeping all those ideas fresh. Um, yes, uh, Sean just said, thanks for sharing Slack. Um, yeah, it's an easier to use Facebook Messenger, like from my point of view as well, just because you can share files easier and you can like separate out your conversations and you can have them like with certain like groups of people and stuff. Um, I don't know, I try to keep Facebook like as a personal thing, but obviously that's not working anymore <laughs> since we have 600 people contacting me about merch all the time. Um, but as far as like business, I wanna keep like the actual people um, that I'm working with and sharing files with and all that stuff on Slack. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's real good for me too when I have like ideas and stuff and I need to like keep these ideas. Cause I used to just flood Nathaniel's <laughs> Facebook Messenger, which I still do on occasion, but it's better yeah. to have it in Slack if I'm talking about like, oh, this is the our group conversation. This is our program conversation. This is the art conversation. This is these people's accounts conversation. Then we can go, instead of like scrolling through Facebook Messenger for 20 minutes to go, oh, what? What was that thing that you said about that thing? It's like, oh, it was, we were talking about this account, so it's right here in this message, because it's, yeah. it's all divided this out. Nice. Room. Yeah. Um, Wendy said that she's learning Airtables. We looked at Airtables, or at least I did, um, but while I was looking at Airtables, I realized I have like the ooh shiny syndrome um, when it comes to new cool platforms for organizing your life. Um, so. I had like maybe 10 that I was using all at once and it just seemed a little redundant and silly. Um, so I've cut everything back to maybe three that I'm using that I can think of off the top of my head, um, and, which is Slack, the whole Google suite basically, um, and uh, Trello are basically the three that, we're, that I'm using every day um, just to kind of organize everything. Um, I think Airtables is great. I think it does a ton, but it was too complicated for me to like fully buy into um, when I already had other things working. So that is that. I don't mean to turn this into like an organization app talk, but those are some questions we had. Um, Stephanie Howell, she sold three shirts the day after our over the shoulder call um, and she posted about it. So we just wanted to shout her out for doing uh, research and whatever else she's learning. Um, from our group, it is actually working. So that is awesome. We love knowing that you guys are making sales um, and helping you guys out. Uh, and then Thomas Gillis, I believe, again, sorry if I murdered that, uh, he sold a shirt for $25. That's going to be a good feeling. Um, I don't, eh, maybe I have. I haven't sold many shirts organically at $25. So that's pretty yeah, cool. Organically. When we partner yeah. up and do other things, we can right. push up. When we're doing nonprofits, when we're doing fundraisers, things like that, we can sell shirts at a higher price. Uh, but organically, to sell a shirt for $25, that's awesome. Uh, so, congratulations to you, Thomas. Just wanted to shout you guys out. Thank you for posting in our group. If you guys are having success, we'd love to see that. That's why we want to take this time um, and just shout you guys out and say big ups. I'm going to sign off now. Thank you guys so much for joining us for such a long Merch Monday. It's funny that we plan to do this like a little bit shorter and it went pretty long, um, but thank you guys for hanging out with us. And we have a cool video coming for you Wednesday, the Hangout Friday. So hopefully you'll be able to join us and have a fantastic week.